Okay, I'm Wyatt. And I'm Alejandro. Today's an exciting Friday, and it should be an exciting show, depending on how it turns out. As you saw just now, the orchestra just had their first show on stage in over a full year. Moving on to some sports news. JV Soccer saw their first loss last night of their first game of the season, losing 0-2. Their team fought hard, but were unable to capitalize on their opportunities on goal. Varsity played Curtis last night, who is ranked number one in the league right now, and adapted to a new formation very well. Through the wind and the rain, the ladies' wolves held their own at the enemy's field. They fell short in the end, 0-1. Our volleyball teams had a rough night with freshmen losing 0-3, JV losing 1-2, and varsity losing 0-3. They play again Monday. Both of the wolves' cross-country teams are moving on to West Central District meet. The ladies were paced by freshman Lauren Laws, who ran fantastic and finished third in the league. The men were led by senior Brennan Kuntz, who finished 11th in the league. The district meet is next Saturday, October 30th at Chambers Bay Properties in University Place. With fall sports getting ready or already in postseason play, it means winter sports are just over the horizon. If you would like to play this winter, you have, a, you have to have a current physical and ASB card. Better hurry. Bowling starts November 1st with the rest starting November 15th. Ladies Basketball Gym's Open has started for this... Gee, wow. Lady, ladies Basketball Gym's have, has started for those wanting to join the team this season. If you would like to attend Tuesdays and Thursdays starting at 5.15, make sure you have a physical and COVID waiver at the ready. And wrapping up sports news, tomorrow's football game has Puyallup versus Puyallup has been moved to Spark Stadium. There is a new group here starting at SK that wants to make sure that you're taking care of something you should have on you every day. I'm Mrs. Wood, founder, resident librarian, and chairperson of the South Kitsap Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Chromebooks. Ever since the beginning of the year, over 40 Chromebooks have been injured. That's about five Chromebooks every day that have succumbed to some sort of terrible fate. These Chromebooks need your help, and with just four simple safety steps, you can get them the help they deserve. Just four steps and you can provide these Chromebooks with a safe and secure home. First, make sure you handle your Chromebook with two hands and always hold by the keyboard. The second step is to ensure you are cautious with any food or drink when around a Chromebook. As much as it is tempting to want to feed your Chromebook, remember they can get seriously sick and even die. Thirdly, Chromebooks like to stay clean. Avoid subconsciously or continuously tattooing them with pencil marks and markers. Stop by the SKPCC headquarters in the library to pick up an electronic wipe and help keep your Chromebook clean. Finally, when you are finished using your Chromebook, make sure that the keyboard area is clear of any earbuds or any other things before closing the lid, as this may damage the screen. And remember, if you choose not to follow these steps and injure your Chromebook in any way, you will be made to make a healthy force donation to our organization. So please take care of your Chromebooks. And don't forget to feed, aka charge your Chromebook at home. It should be fully charged before you come in every day. Now, we need to move on to a topic that we know everyone is tired of hearing about, but we have to talk about it. Masks. Right now, we can all see what a mask, what we're not wearing a mask does. Droplets and everything inside those droplets just fly around. With a mask, well, they don't. Of course, you have to be wearing a mask correctly. If you're not covering your nose, it's as bad as not wearing a mask at all. So please, keep your nose covered. No one wants your wet nose droplets. Now into lighter news, SK is co-hosting a virtual college fair on Monday starting at 6 on Zoom. There will be some colleges from here in Washington and some out of state that will show off their school. 
Make sure to check your grade level classroom as you must pre-register to attend. Our theater department is getting ready to perform their fall play, She Kills Monsters. If you like 990s and cool fight scenes, go check it out. Purchase your tickets before the 5th. Prices range from 2 to $10. Tickets available via the web store. We still have some colleges coming to the school, so head down to the Career Center. The colleges coming in today, coming in down are College of Idaho, College of Idaho is showing up today, on Monday. U.S. Marine Corps will come, will come by. And finally, Gonzaga will be on, by on, one, on Tuesday. Speaking of colleges, we have some scholarships available to hand out for some students. If you want to get up for $50,000 for college for free, try sending up for Elks National Foundation's Most Valuable Student Contest. There will also be other scholarships, like Fathoms of Fun and VFW, that are due by Halloween. Don't miss out on this free money and see how you can apply for these scholarships today in the Career Center. Spanish Club is moving their meeting to Tuesday next week due to conferences. They'll be decorating sugar cookies for Dia de los Muertos. If you want to be a part of one of the biggest clubs in school, make sure great, make some great stories and put your teamwork to the test. Get ready. D&D rolls in November 2nd. Meaning today is Mandarin plus, as for Monday, ASL, Magic the Gathering, and Model UN will meet. Our school today will have some more orchestra music from last night. Try to see if you can recognize it. And it looks like that's sadly the end of today's show. I'm Alejandro. And I'm Wyatt. See you next week, South. Peace.